Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and in today's episode, we're talking about the gifts of the Magi brought to the baby Jesus in Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, which read, After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and of myrrh. So today is the day after Christmas. And while yesterday we celebrated the birth of Christ, today we are looking at what happens after that. And the first thing that we have in the Gospel of Matthew, and this is the only place where this is recorded, we have this visit from the Magi or from wise men. To set the stage a little bit for us, Matthew tells us that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, during the time of King Herod, these Magi, these wise men came from the east and were looking for the child the one who had been born the king of the Jews. Now, they are coming to find the Christ child. King Herod, of course, is not a good king. And we're not going to talk a whole lot about him today, but suffice it to say, he does some really bad stuff after all of this happens. He is terrified, right, because... The Magi have come and asked, where is this child who's been born king of the Jews? And Herod, of course, sees that as a direct threat to himself. So they tell them, they tell the wise men that the child was born in Bethlehem. They tell him that that's where he is. Herod calls the Magi, finds out from them the exact time that the star appeared He sends them to Bethlehem, tells them to go find the child. Oh, and by the way, when you find him, come back and let me know where he is so that I too may go and worship him. Now, that is a false sense of whatever you want to call it. King Herod has no intention of worshiping. He intends to go and kill the child because the child is a threat. So anyway, so okay, go. So they go off. And that's where we pick up in our verses today. After they hear hear this from the king, they go on their way. The star that they had seen in the east that alerted them that there was something going on went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with these gifts, three gifts. And that is what we're going to focus on today. These three gifts that were brought by the Magi or the wise men, however you want to refer to them. Gold, incense or frankincense, and myrrh. Now, these three gifts have their own specific meanings, their own symbolism, and when we bring all of them together, they tell a very interesting story. So we'll start with gold. Gold, as we know, is a precious metal. Gold was brought as the gift, symbolizing 
Jesus' royalty, his position as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So gold to symbolize royalty. Frankincense was an expensive fragrance or perfume and incense made from trees in Arabia and India, and it was symbolic of his divinity in recognition of Jesus as the high priest. We can go into other parts of the Bible and see where Jesus is referenced as the high priest. He is referenced as um, the high priest in the order of Melchizedek, different places within the New Testament where Jesus is referred to as the high priest. So we have the frankincense, which is symbolic of his divinity. And then we have kind of the odd gift, not something that would normally be brought for a child, is this gift of myrrh. And why is this gift so odd? Well, so myrrh is a specific kind of, um, it's very costly. It's a very costly perfume made from rare thorn bushes in Arabia and Ethiopia that is used as an antiseptic anointing oil and embalming fluid, which again, sounds like a really strange gift to bring for a baby. However, this gift is symbolic. It's symbolizing, it's pointing us to the death of Christ as payment for our sins. So if we look at these three gifts, that were brought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We have sort of the story of the gospel all here together. You know, gold is a representation of Christ as king. The frankincense showing his divinity, showing that he is Christ the Lord. And the myrrh, which is symbolizing his death as the atoning payment for our sins. So isn't it so interesting that the gifts that were brought from these wise men, from these magi in the Far East, these gifts were brought, and it's also interesting that there are three of them. The number three um, in biblical text is symbolic of the Trinity, of perfection, of the Father, the Son, the Spirit, you know, all, all of these things. Three is a is symbolic of wholeness, completeness. And so we have these three gifts that are brought that basically tell us a story of what Jesus' purpose is here, what his purpose here on earth is. So how, how incredible is that? I'm always fascinated by how all of these things tend to fit together in ways that we may not always recognize at first blush, you know, when we first take a look at it, when we read the story, we think, okay, great, you know, the wise men came and they brought three gifts and, you know, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And most people don't even know what frankincense and myrrh are. Um, we just know that they were brought, right? If we know the story of the, the wise men, we just know that they were brought. The wise men are always pictured in the nativity scenes that you see, and they always have their little boxes, right? Their little treasure chest of either gold or frankincense or myrrh, but we don't really give it a whole lot of thought beyond the surface level. So I'm always, I'm always in awe. I'm always um, filled with wonder when I'm able to dig in a little bit more and really kind of see the connections between all of these different things and how everything is so intricately orchestrated. If we will simply take the time to look a little bit deeper. So friends, as you go through your day today, think about these gifts and not just from the perspective of here's gold, here's frankincense, here's myrrh. These gifts, along with what they were symbolic of, were things that were important, right? This wasn't just something that they, you know, picked up on their way out the door. These things had value. They had worth. They were important. They were expensive. And these men brought these gifts 
to lay them before the one who has been born king of the Jews. They brought these gifts. They bowed down. They worshipped a baby because they believed that he was the one, the promised one. And so as you go through your day today, I want you to think about what gifts you have. What gifts have you been given that you can in turn lay down at the feet of the one? What do you have that you can give? Time, money, talent, effort. How about just your presence? That's not presence like gifts, but how about just your presence to be in communion with the Lord, to worship, just to be, to be still and know that he is God. So that's the thought that I will leave you with today. And let me know how that, let me know what you come up with. Let me know what stirs in you to think about what it is that you have that you can give to the one who needs nothing. What is it that you can offer? Thank you, friend, for being here with me today, y'all. It truly is such a gift and such a blessing to be on this journey with you. And I want to know what's on your heart and what's on your mind today. So leave me a comment or send me a message and let me know. I also want to invite you to come back and join me for our next episode to talk about rest for the people of God. We'll be in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Until then. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.